What's up guys, I am the Kenganator and today I'm going to be bringing you a short video just to show you the first few opening turns with the new faction, Norska. So, what I'm going to be going through is maybe the first 50 turns or so so you can get yourself established so that you're not going to just get crushed by everything around you uh, so that you can then conquer the old world on your own because as we all know, winter is coming. So, our legendary lord is going to be Wolfric the Wanderer. Now, he's kind of an assassin type, so he's the one that you want to send after other enemy legendary lords. Although, as you'll, be, as you'll see when we start, he's got a lot of awesome campaign effects that we're going to be uh, taking advantage of. And when you look at his lord effects, plus 50 uh, melee attack for all mammoth units, so mammoths are awesome. Minus 10% upkeep for Marauder units, you're going to be mostly f uh, focusing on Marauders in this campaign. And all units of Warfrick's army cost fear, a nice little bonus. And you start off with Berserkers, very good entity infantry. You start with Marauder Ice Wolf Chariot, which is kind of pointless at the beginning of the game, I think. So we're actually going to get rid of that. And we start off with Skin Wolves, they're so awesome, so we're going to keep them anyway. Right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are up in the north uh, on Ice Drake Fjord. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to get this upgraded because Berserkers are really good, especially for what you're going to be fighting uh, up here, which is almost entirely infantry. That's what you're going to be facing at the beginning. And uh, there's actually going to be very little fighting uh, involved up here because our plan is to... Because the way, the way the faction works, if you kill the faction leader belonging to another tribe, you can confederate them immediately. And uh, the only ones that we're at war with at the moment are Scalig here. So the first thing we're going to do is going to take Launch of Graveyard. And then we're going to try and assassinate their lord in battle. Basically kind of trick them into fighting us. Uh, so we can confederate Doomkeep as well. And that will give us uh, one province. And then after that, the plan is to do the same thing to Bjornlings, uh, the, the, these guys here. Uh, so we will, under the guise of peace, we will move right next to their army. With an army that can kill theirs. And then and then just defeat it in combat and then that will allow us to confederate so that's the plan for this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this chariot because the upkeep is quite high at 225 compared to all the rest so we'll get rid of these guys you don't need it for this fight we're going to move uh wolfric's army over here and uh we're going to make sure that they're raiding stance because uh you get no movement penalties for being in raiding with uh with norska so that's really cool and then we're going to attack launch ship graveyard next and that's just going to be an also result so we'll see you in the next turn of course technology uh so technology wise the first thing that we're going to go for is uh war tools because that's just going to make it a little bit cheaper for us when we actually uh recruit our army and then the next thing we're going to get is leadership because your marauders leadership suck super hard so we need to boost that up any way we can and then after that we're going to go back up to get weapon strength plus 10 percent uh for marauder infantry after that is going to be movement range and we're going to kind of uh go a bit a bit here a bit there a bit everywhere uh but this is also a really good one plus two unit experience for marauders that's excellent it just it just means that your marauders come out a lot lot better and you get uh post battle income loot as well which is obviously good so first war tools then uh leadership then melee strength then campaign and uh unit experience so that's the general plan okay ending the turn okay now we're on turn five and what we've done is we've taken launch ship graveyard and we started uh building that up uh, as soon as it was available as soon as the population point was available and uh from there uh the turn after we moved down here we raided just here because you don't quite have enough movement to uh to sack immediately so we raided, waited a turn, sacked, and then moved off. And they can't do anything about it. And don't worry about declaring war on them, because they were going to declare war on you anyway. And that's one thing you'll notice about this campaign, is that you get attacked very little. So really, once you conquer all of this, then you're kind of doing okay. And it seems a bit random whether or not uh, Bjornling come into the fight along with uh, Skalig. So it's just random whether that happens to you. It didn't happen in this game. So that's good. Uh, now we are we moved back home and now we're recruiting an army. It's important to recruit an army for four turns because Scalic will be in range to attack you in four turns. So the plan is we're going to set up a little ambush right outside of our keep to try and get a battle with our, with our garrison that's in here. And we want to recruit the Berserkers last because they have the most upkeep. But they will also do the most work, generally, for you. So it's good to have a couple of them in your army. So we'll go over a few turns, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. 
And as soon as I say that, the turn after, they invite them to join in, in the battle. So, it's random, so now we're at war with both of them. That's okay. The plan to take out these guys is take out their settlements out here. They only have three. They got this one. They tend to hang around this one the most. And we'll take these out and attack them uh, later on. Okay, so now it's turn nine, and the Scale Lake army has arrived. And as we can see, it's Fellman Ingerson. And then if we check Relations the Scale Lake away, if we check the, the faction, he is their general. So if we take him out, we'll be able to confederate. And uh, in here, I built the, the money building to give us some extra income. And it gives us extra raiding and sacking income as well, which is always good. Uh, this is going to be it's going to be quite important to get as much as you can because as you can see we're almost we're almost uh, we're almost maxed out there. And now we're waiting for uh, as we're waiting we got another level up so we've gone two into there just to get our population growth going. And as you can see in one turn we're going to be able to upgrade which is pretty cool. Now what we're going to do here is as we said before we're going to pop him just outside here and we're going to set up an ambush. Uh, to try and catch him off guard and also to be in range of our settlement so that we get more reinforcements. So we'll see you in a couple of turns. Okay, so the ambush didn't actually work and we didn't get the reinforcements there. I didn't actually know that was the thing. Maybe if you just set up normally it would be fine. But if you ought to resolve the battle, you actually get a victory anyway. So now we can finish him off. And then we can see that uh, we're going to be able to confederate immediately afterwards. So we'll just get get this going through auto saves every turn that's why it takes so long so we'll just auto resolve that and always go for money almost always go for money and there you go so and we got a pretty good follower as well so that's pretty cool so now we can get to the confederate options that's technology so we're good scaling we'll get peace and then we'll be able to get the joint confederation which is great. Now we've got access to the full province. So what we can do now is we can get rid of this guy. This guy is just eating to our money. There's no point. So boom, boom, boom. Go away. And uh, we can we can try and upgrade. This is actually pretty good that that's here because it means we can free up a slot here uh, for more important buildings later on. So we can get rid of that. This uh, we'll keep this just for now. Why not? And then here, always, always go for money. Although one one of the problems that you're going to be facing quite a lot in this campaign is public order problems. So what we'll do is we will we'll build a public order building here to to help with it because it really does become a pain in the ass. And then we'll get rid of this and we're going to replace these two buildings with money buildings, and that should help us get get, get along uh, a lot better with our income and have bigger yeah. armies. So now it's on to Bjornling. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, sack this, take it. Then we'll move down here, sack this, take this. With the extra income that we're going to get from our from our buildings here. We're not going to upgrade this just yet. Marauder Champions are very good, but they're also very expensive to upkeep. And it costs a lot of money. And our, our money is quite limited. Uh, so now that we got this, we can just upgrade uh, Swelling of Doom. And we'll, we'll be, uh, be able to tech up very, very quickly. Which is a pretty cool thing about uh, the Norska factions. So, we'll see you in a few turns once we've taken this, once we've taken this, and then it's on to the battle over here. Or maybe if we snipe him, it just depends on the enemy movement. So, see you in a bit. One thing to make a note of, when rebellions happen and you've only got a very basic structure with no walls or anything like that, it can actually, they can take your settlement in one turn, especially if it's a chaos stack. This just seems to be Marauder, so that's fine. So it's really important to have an army either within reinforcement range or in your settlement. Uh, very, very important. Otherwise, they just take it and, and raise it immediately. So you need to be very careful of that. So that's just something to bear in mind. So technology-wise, we've just we've just done plus 10% uh, Marauder damage. So now we're going to go down campaign movement range. We're going to get the plus 2 unit experience. And then we're going to maybe get missile damage and armor as well. Okay, so see ya. I advise you to Oops. seek ways to further. Okay, so now that we're on turn 15, we've recruited a maxed out army here with uh, with Wolfric. And as we can see, we've moved up to see if we can take this, but our, his main garrison is in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a secondary army to go and attack here. In a couple of turns, we're going to, or in the next turn, yeah, the next turn we're going to have an extra 200 gold income, which is good. We're upgrading all this. Still building here, and we're building up to be able to recruit Werken. Because now that Wolfric is level seven from fighting the from fighting the rebellion, 
we can get plus five hero rank on our skin wolves. And skin wolves have the same same rank upgrade skill that Wolfric does. So they stack on top of each other. So it allows you to, if you have a Werken with plus three, you have Wolfric plus three. And with this technology that we're going to research, all your Marauders come out at rank eight, which is really, really awesome. So that's really going to level the playing field because on Legendary, you really struggle to fight equally against your contemporates because of the debuffs that you get especially morale so we're going to keep wolfric up here to keep a threat so that he doesn't move and then we'll build a secondary army to come and take his provinces back here and then we can do a double attack where one one army pins them here with a siege and then the other army comes in from behind and then that should be able to defeat him so we'll see you in five or so turns <laughs> Okay, now it's turn 19, and uh, they they moved in against us with a couple of armies. This army, which was 19 stack strong, basically this exact army my here, attacked mine, which was 20. Undenied. And the auto resolve looked pretty even, but I just auto resolved it anyway, and it came out with a victory for me. Uh, so that wasn't enough to kill him, but now we've got our secondary army up here. So if he stays there, he's definitely dead next turn. Along with this reinforcement, it doesn't matter what he has garrisoned in here. I should definitely be able to take the win. Uh, so once we take the win there, then that will be that will be these guys confederated. And then we're just going to try and max out our money buildings as much as we can. And while we're doing that, we're going to be sending a lord to go and wreck some havoc down south. So we'll see you in a bit. So, now that we're on turn 20, we managed to kill the garrison and the general that was in here uh, pretty one-sidedly with these two armies. And we've confederated all of all of this area here, so now we control all of this, which is really awesome. So what we're focusing on building-wise is we're just trying to get our money buildings upgraded as quickly as possible. And we're going to do that in this area as well. So we've got... We, we got a bit of redundancy here because we've got that in our main settlement. So what we can do is we can get rid of that and we can replace it with money buildings later on. And we're just waiting for population. We'll get population growth next turn because of uh, what we've been doing with Wolfric, upgrading his, uh, his uh, swelling of the doom, upgrading that to get it as high level as possible. And now we've got Savage Skills level 2 and this very important upgrade giving plus 5 ranked for Skin Wolves. So now what we can do is we can actually recruit a hero here. Just make sure that uh, Wolfric is in the territory when you recruit them. And also you need the money, obviously. And they'll be come out rank 6. And then we're going to level them up to rank 10 by just assaulting here and just leveling them up uh, to get rank 3 in that... I can't remember what it's called. The thing that gives you plus 3 or extra ranks to all of your troops that you recruit. And once that's once this is complete and that's all complete, then when we start recruiting our armies, they will come out at rank 8. Your Marauders will be rank 8 right off the bat. After that, we can take these guys, confederate them, because it's always good. So that's once you get money in all of them, that's an extra 1,200 income right there. And then it's time to start moving down to start sacking Bretonia. Bretonia seems to be the easiest target. Because they're so far away, uh, you don't need to worry about repercussions too, too much. And if you manage to take Corone, that gives you access to one of the one of the better technologies, which I believe is do, 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 this one here. So if you ever get a trade agreement, which doesn't really seem to happen that much, you get extra 500% trade, which is all right. Uh, but it's growth plus 25 in all your provinces. That's what you're looking at. So it's going to increase your growth as well. It's it's decent. It's not the best one. The best ones uh, were this one. Upkeep minus 20% for land units everywhere. Research rate plus 10% and global recruitment capacity. That's just an excellent one. But that's Tilia. That's the other side of the map. And then the second and then the other best one is this one. That's if you take on if you take Altdorf. Weapon strength plus 25%. Wow. That is an amazing technology upgrade. But you need to take Altdorf, which obviously is going to be rather difficult. Uh, so I recommend you raid down here. Uh, you can set up outposts and such if you wish. But generally speaking, the races here are quite strong, so they'll take it back almost immediately. Um, your best bet is to just keep raiding, 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 raiding until your army dies. And accept the losses, but you've raised yourself so, so much money uh, that by the time uh, by the time your guy comes back, you, you can just rebuild the army here again. And there's normally not anything, anything bad about it. The only thing you got to worry about is uh, Wintertooth now. Wintertooth is gonna, they'll declare war with you at a certain number of turns 
Uh, I'll keep playing this and then let you guys know what turn that is that they declare war. But you need to take him out because there's no way you can... You can't ally with them. You can't do anything with them. They will come and try and kill you. So you, if you take out Throg, um, then you can confederate them after that. And Throg is extremely powerful. He's an extremely powerful legendary lord. So it's well worth your time and effort to try and hunt him down quickly and get him into your army. Because that's always going to be good. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to disband all of our armies. Because... We don't, we don't actually need them uh, at all. Because when, what we're going to do is we're going to recruit new armies. And they're going to come out far, far higher ranks than they were before. Even this guy. This guy doesn't need to be here. Uh, we can get rid of him as well. So we'll just keep... We'll keep... Uh, we'll move Wolfric into this territory so we can recruit a skin wolf or two. Get them leveled up. And then uh, we can... And then move him back here so that he can increase the population and then we'll just keep building 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 uh all of the money that we can and build the technologies that we want it's also worth uh building a wall here when you can because it can be a bit risky uh but but because we've got we've got this going on right now it doesn't seem to be too bad the public order is mostly for when the rebellions come that's why you want the walls so guys that's it for my tutorial for how to play the opening turns of Norska it's once you've managed to establish establish yourself like this with a couple of provinces then it becomes so so much easier in order to deal with it all okay um, make sure you build uh, public order buildings everywhere absolutely everywhere because especially when you confederate because you don't want to confederate too many people too fast because then you're going to be dealing with rebellions all over the place and as you can see once we got rid of all the armies we've actually got a pretty decent income now we're going to be using that income to purely upgrade our income buildings as much as possible so that uh we we can keep perpetuating perpetuating the war and then once we've got a few of those built up we're going to build a rank eight army uh thanks to the the wolfkin that we're going to recruit the heroes we're going to take grayling moots we're actually not going to go too much further than that uh maybe we'll take nilfgaard plains and the one down here i believe that's where it is because if the dwarves are still alive they will attack all the way up to here but as long as you're here they're not really going to attack you very often uh and it's also it's also a good way to be able to spot Wintertooth when it starts arriving. So when Wintertooth starts uh, declaring war on you, what I recommend is getting a couple of sorcerers because since the public order building is also the recruitment option for sorcerers, uh, I would recruit a couple of sorcerers and move them into positions like here and here. So you can spot when Thrall comes because chances are you're not going to have much army uh, because you're waiting, you're, you're building up, you're building up and just teching up because with plus 36 growth, you can actually upgrade this to tier 4 and 5 very very quickly see we're already on two population surplus in two turns we can upgrade this to tier four which allows you to get things like mammoths and and get the get um the buildings such as uh, the furnaces and stuff like that uh what you want ideally is in these two provinces uh because the recruitment you can recruit here and here uh what you want to do is here you want to have your your melee troops so you want to have the furnace building this one the smithy yeah you want you want these buildings uh preferably and you also kind of want these buildings for the extra recruit and recruitment cost reduction um and then uh one of one of two of these buildings so it's up to you which ones that you go for that's the most effective way to do it you can get both here if you're willing to sacrifice the wall to protect your city but if you want the wall then you're going to have to choose one of them you're going to have to get rid of uh this building here but this is just for the beginning um and you could do that with both outposts and that gets you access to all of the good stuff so basically uh the where uh the werekin or the skin sorry the skin wolves with armor it gives you access to fimir uh which are very strong fimir fimir guys are very strong these guys are designed to take on bretonian cavalry <laughs> anti-large armor piercing armor sundering it's brilliant and steam tanks as well like steam tanks uh these guys laugh at steam tanks frost worms obviously awesome mammoths that's what we're really after right because uh, we get the bonuses and we're playing norska so we want mammoths and you get access to norskan giants and with both of these here they'll come out at plus two rank and they will come and they'll be 10 percent uh cheaper and you get recruitment capacity plus two as well so you want you want these two buildings you want these two buildings and maybe and, and something else that so it's up to you guys what you want to do. and obviously you want some of these so that you can get the the werekin as well uh 
or whatever. Like skin wolves. Yeah. You want those guys. So, as I said before, confederate up here. Uh, take this. You, you can do that. You can do that really easily now because your income is going to be really good. And then start heading down here. And also start doing your, uh, monster your monster hunts. Because the with the monster hunts, they give you 12, 12 progress to each god. So, without raising any settlements, you can get... You could probably get a god that's legion to level 3 without actually having to raise a single settlement. Just do the quests and the, the at tier 1, the first one you want to do is the one for the frost worm because that's going to unlock the regiment of renown for you so you can get the super frost worm, the cold voider. Uh, so that's why I'd recommend as well. But that's going to be a little bit later and the quest line sort of starts over here. So maybe when you start want to fight Throg, that's when you can start thinking about doing it. Okay? So guys, I hope this was uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. If uh, if you liked what you see, then please give me a comment below because you know I'm more than new to this and I want to learn as much as possible. So give me your feedback and give me a like and hit me with a subscribe if you want. That'd be awesome. And more of this to come. Absolutely, uh, definitely for Winter Tooth at the very least. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. One last little thing, these guys may actually rebel against you on roughly about turn 30, so what I'd recommend is building an army on turn 28, just so you'll be able to deal with it and assassinate their lords. Uh, that's not why I did, uh, so I took a bit of damage, but that's what I recommend you guys to do. And I recruited two skin wolves as soon as I could, and now you see they're rank 10, so that means I got the plus 3 here, so when I recruit here, though everything will be rank 8. Okay, just one little final update. On turn 47, that is Winter Tooth uh, declaring war against us. So, you have roughly uh, 35 turns from where we left off. I can't remember exactly. Uh, to be able to deal with Winter Tooth. It will take them a little bit of time to make their way over because they do have to get through quite a lot, guys. Uh, in the meantime, we managed to level up our settlements, you know, quite a bit. Getting the top tier of most things. We took over this area as well, and they managed to recruit, uh, get leveled up quite a bit. So we're demolishing all the useless buildings, going to replace it with what we want. And we could take this one as well. So that's what you can do in your campaign, and just defend against Throg. Kill Throg, and then you can recruit him as well. And he's extremely powerful. Just put him with trolls, max out his troll army skills, and you're probably good to go. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye!